This is Phillies Post Game Live presented by Cure Auto Insurance. Ricky Patalico, I'm Michael Barkham, Ben Davis in a moment from Washington, D.C. 8-7, Washington in a deserved loss for the Philadelphia Phillies. Horrible. They're, play, they're playing so bad right now. But here's the thing. Uh, now five straight losses, seven games below 500, and a 25 and 32 record, 25 and 32, which now matches Washington's record, and Washington is in last place in the National League East, which means the Phillies are in last place in the National League East, 57 games into this season. Ricky Bowe, this is incredible, except we, it's been happening. We've watched it let, all season. Let's start. There's been enough problems with fundamentals. I thought fundamentals showed up again in this game. Drew, uh, what, what, Drew, Drew Ellis. Ellis getting picked off of first base early on in the ball game. I thought Schwarber should have came up with a catch in left field. I thought uh, Marsh should have came up with a ball in center field. There was a lot of that going on, and right now that, that's becoming a little bit of a problem. I, I thought – I thought Zach Wheeler was awful in, in this game. He was not himself, wasn't hitting his spots. His fastball was up in the zone. He got hit around the ballpark a little bit. Everything went wrong. One guy did show up. One guy showed up, and that's Nick Castellanos. Five mm -hmm. RBIs, four hits in the game, two home runs. Thank you, Nick, for showing up. You didn't show up last year, but he's sure showing up right now. Uh, and you look at the rest of the ball club. I mean, it, nothing really went well. I whoa, mean, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, Kyle they, Schwarber all the way up to 166. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. From 160 all the, yeah. All right, you know what? Two for no, five. I don't really care. I mean, the bottom line is you lost the game to the Washington Nationals. You now join them in the cellar of the NL East. This is not a baseball team on paper that looks to be a, a last place team. And it's starting to bother a lot of people. I know it's bothering you. It's bothering me. They, these guys got to all step up. Not just one guy on any given night. Don't get down 6 nothing. That would, that would be a start. Yeah. Uh, but, but I think it's more than just one thing. It's all around baseball. You have to be able to control your defense, which the Phillies do not do. They're not good defensively. And on top of that, yeah, offensively, you have one guy go off tonight. I mean, you had a couple scattered guys with a couple of hits, but that all came later on the ball game with a garbage bullpen that they were facing. Lost five straight, 10 and 19 in their last 29, 11 and 22 on the road this season, 25 and 32 overall record. Seven games under 500 is a new low this season, and they are on pace to finish with 71 wins. And that's not sniffing the playoffs, not that they are right now. But the way the playoffs work now, they were three and a half games back of a wild card spot. They only had a leapfrog six teams. But at the same time, Ricky Bowen, I ask you this, and Tom McCarthy and Ben Davis, they're also going into tonight two losses from being the worst record in baseball, depending on how everything falls with the other teams. And when you that's, look that's annoying. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's annoying. This, how, how does this team go from where they should be right now to where they actually are right now? You, you are not playing good baseball. You, do, you could go in every aspect of the game. We'll start with starting pitching. How was the starting pitching tonight? Not Terrible. good. The bullpen was not bad, besides the fact that Brogdon ends up giving up the game winner in the eighth inning. Uh, defensively, how would, you, how would you look at their defense? Good, bad, indifferent. Not great. Not good. Not good. Uh, so, I mean, every aspect of the game, base running, they screwed up again tonight, uh, uh, getting picked off of first base early on in the ball game. And how about letting a starting pitcher off the hook? You go back to that first inning, you got first and second, nobody out. How'd that turn out? Not Nothing. Good. Goose eggs. This team, it's the, I don't know if they're showing their true colors or their false colors. Yeah, well, let's go to Ben Davis because we just saw it. Ben also smelled it, which is, it did not smell good either, as well as it didn't look good. There Probably he is from Washington. There. Ben, I don't know where you'd start. I'm looking at a 25-32 and 32 Phillies team, and right now the, the last place team in the National League is the Colorado Rockies at 24-34. and 34. The Phillies are right there for the worst record in the National League, depending on what happens over the next couple of days. This is going to continue for the indefinite future, I guess. I sure hope not, uh, Michael. This is, uh, I think it would have been better to lose this one a night 8 nothing than to lose it, uh, you know, 8-7. Eight eight seven. Seven. This, is, yeah, this is a heartbreaker, and I, it was nice to see them battle back. I will give them credit for battling back. Nice to see a couple of guys in the bullpen step up. But overall, it's definitely a winnable game, especially early on in this ball game, because 
this, there were some, some defensive plays that probably should have been made. I think if you were to ask a lot of these guys in the outfield, they would know that, hey, I should, I should have been able to catch that baseball. But it just does, wasn't the way it was tonight. And, you know, it, it's, it's got to get better. It's, if you're looking at this the, the, in general, and I agree with Ricky, you had one guy that really showed up tonight, and Nick Castellanos has been great throughout the course of the year. I give him all the credit in the world for rebounding the way that he has. But there's other guys that have to just be better. Um, that's the bottom line. It's, it's gut. I used, coming to the field today, I was talking with Kevin Stocker. I said, tonight's game is a gut check game because the, you've got a set, set of games coming up here, three with the Nats, three with the Tigers that are, you know, on paper, on paper, they should win. They didn't win tonight. Two I'm and not, six on I'm, this I'm road not, trip now. I'm not so sure we should even talk about it on paper anymore because they should beat just about every team when you look at it on paper. Ben, what is going on with the catcher? What is going on with JT Real Muto right now? He looks like he's just trying to feel for the baseball. Um, I said to Tom in, in, during one of the breaks, just feels like he's, he's not staying behind it. And it's just kind of something like he's feeling for it, he's reaching for it. Not a whole, whole lot of hard contact. If you think about last year in his first half, most of his outs, if he, if he didn't strike out, most of his outs were pop-ups to second base, pop-ups to first base, or lazy fly balls to right field. That's what you're seeing a lot of right now because he's kind of just guiding the bat through the zone. He's kind of cutting the baseball. If this is the baseball, right, and you end up cutting it this way, you put that side spin on it. That's why you get that feathered ball to right field. That's what I'm seeing out of him right now, not staying behind it, not trusting himself. Sometimes it's okay to turn and burn and, and cut it loose. It's like he's just trying to feather balls to right field. Here's the other thing, Ben. Ricky just said, like, on paper, they're supposed to be as good or better than any team in baseball, except there's no first baseman to speak of, someone they can hang their hat on. Uh, there's no fifth starter. Their top two starters have struggled and are struggling, depending on the start. Uh, and, and there's a, the new guy. And Trey Turner is, is really the ball fouled off his foot tonight. Who knows what's going to happen after that? Uh, that's all on paper as well. We're seeing it on the field, too. I, I don't know what else they can do. And when I look at how this team was built now, and I think about the fact that there is no fifth starter, and tomorrow is a bullpen game, I, I don't know where they go from here. Do they have a shot, that's really? That's what I'm saying. I, it just can't be, well, the starting pitch needs to get better. Runners in scoring position needs to get better. Defense needs to get better. Base running needs to get better. It, it's all encompassing. It has to be everybody. It, it, will they turn it around? You sure hope so. Uh, have they turned it around? They have not as up to this point. They are very frustrated. I think they're squeezing the sawdust out of the handles of some of these bats. And, you know, they're not letting the game come to them. They're too talented a bunch to, to try this hard all the time. Uh, and it's just it's kind of trickle down theory like oh this guy doesn't hit the three run homer I'm gonna hit the four run homer it, the game's not doesn't work that way It's too stinking hard to put that much pressure on yourself each and every at bat. Yep I, I still and, and Ricky uh, comment on this as well. I still got to involve the coaching staff and now Dave Dombrowski Dave Dombrowski built this team so did Sam fold uh, they were built in his their likeness uh, Rob Thompson manages the team with Kevin Long and Caleb Cotham, Cotham and our friend and colleague Ruben, uh, Ruben Amaro Jr. and I were going back and forth last night and I said who else is to blame he said the players are to blame they're failing to do it uh, but I just keep thinking there is a coaching staff there is a manager you cannot it, fire it, the manager I, every single year okay how about once a year no uh, once well a they, year. They, they were doing that I mean I look at it this way these players have got to be held accountable for themselves you know what those are the guys that they're paying and they're paying really good money for these guys how about they take care of it themselves how about forget about your coaching staff, forget about the hitting coach, forget about the pitching coach. How about the players take the pressure they're now? They're not doing that. Take the heat off your coaches and get the job done. Ben, your thoughts yeah, Michael, on this? this is, and I, this I agree. Is, you know, it was tongue-in-cheek. I understand you can't fire a coach or a manager every single year. But they're not responding, these guys. They're not responding, no, but it's not from a lack of effort on the coach's standpoint. They do put their players in the best position to succeed. But right now, I agree with Ricky Bowe. This is on the players. They, have, they just have to be better. And whether that be, again, through all the different aspects of the game, how do you get better? You look yourself in the mirror and say, how can I? I know it's a team sport, but if each of these guys start doing something individually better, then that will make the team as a whole better. And I think if they approach it that way, they're gonna, you're going to start to see a lot more Ws. 
I hope you're right, Ben. I hope you're right. We thank you for joining us as always, and we will see you tomorrow, my friend. Ben Davis right, boys. from Nationals Park. Have a great night, buddy. Uh, standings right now in the National League East. We could. Uh, this is uh, presented by our friends at Sioka Dealerships. And we could go National League, National League East, but if you go National League East, there are the Philadelphia Phillies, incredibly, or perhaps not, with the Washington Nationals tied in the cellar of the National League East. This is with the fourth highest payroll in baseball. It's, it's unfathomable. How? 20, How is this happening? That, well, that, I think that's the thing that annoys me. How is this happening? And, and I, what I don't want to hear anymore from Rob Thompson, from anybody on the team. It's okay. We're going to be all right. It's still early. I don't care what time of season it is. This team should be better than what they are, period. Yeah. The other thing he said the other night that really ticked off a lot of fans is that, you know, the last three National League champions have also started yeah, out really slowly. Too. Yeah, guess what? It's beyond the start of the season. You know, we're, we're, we're past the third of a way into the season. I mean, we're, well, you, you play six months, really, in baseball terms. And, and now, all of a sudden, you're over two months in now. It's time to wake up. Yeah. Wake up, smell the coffee. You know what? How about starting to – I know it's all about them having fun. I, I think that's a great thing, right? I love hearing mm -hmm. that. Well, it's a lot more fun when you win. And it's a lot more fun for us when you win, too. All I know is – Rob Thompson seemed to be at a loss for words to describe what was to come for his team. Nervous what we're going to hear right now from Rob Thomas. It was a little awkward the or other Thompson. night. Or Thompson. Or Thompson. Did I say Thomas? Thomas. Oh, man. Doesn't matter, Sometimes I guess. Sometimes you got to laugh. Here, here's Rob Thompson post-game. Might, might be next week. Is there a particular aspect of this game tonight that kind of sticks with you or eats at you? Um, probably the pickoff at first base. There was a big spot there. There was a bunch of, you know, I thought Wheeler had good stuff. I talked to Caleb. Caleb said that uh, his execution, his location was decent. But they just seem to be all over him, especially his fastball. So I don't know what's going on there. But um, so that was, wasn't because of lack of effort. So it's, it's uh, kind of surprising. But, uh, but yeah, I was happy with the offense. They kept grinding. They came back. We swung the bats a lot better tonight. Um, you know, we had a couple of poor routes in the outfield um, that cost us, cost Wheeler some pitches. But, uh, but, I, but I was happy that they came back and they kept fighting. Those plays in the outfield in the first two innings, I mean, are those balls that need to be caught? A few of them, I and mean, when you're facing a lineup that's as contact-based as this team, I mean, it's the importance of defense. Yeah, it looked like Schwartz kind of took a little banana route on that. and. Um, and Marcy just, you know, line drives right at a center fielder are tough because it's it's right at you. It's hard to to judge. And kind of came in a couple of steps and tried to track it back, but um, he didn't get there. So. Did it seem like Wheeler's command took a step back from Atlanta from the start in Atlanta? According to Caleb, it, it didn't by a whole lot. So I I, I don't know. I'd, I'd have to look at the, the entire game myself. Which is according to Caleb, he said that his. His execution wasn't all that bad, so I don't know. And, you know, to come back late in the game, score all those runs, is encouraging what you saw offensively to be able to make a yeah. comeback like that? Or? Yeah, yeah, it was. I mean, we swung the bats a lot better and uh, never gave up. Nick Castellanos with a huge night. That was good to see. Um, Schwarber with a double and a base hit. Um, first one in a while, I think. Um, so, you know, maybe we can. Uh, Add on to that. Carry on. Have you ever experienced something like this with any organization you've been with, like the high highs and the low lows and like the long streaks in both directions? Not really. No, I haven't. I haven't. It's it's very strange, but uh, we got to overcome it. We got to play better and, and uh, get consistent in all phases and um, keep moving forward. It was very impressive that Castellanos was able to hit like that against many different pitchers too. He seemed like this yeah. was his night. Yeah, he was he was locked in on everything. How does um, the bullpen usage tonight impact tomorrow? Like so Strom will season? start tomorrow, and he should be available for two two plus innings, and then we'll go from there. Are all the guys that were tonight that pitch tonight unavailable for tomorrow? Or uh, they are. They should be all available tomorrow. Yeah. So I mean, I guess you're not expecting to start like this out of Wheeler tonight, but with tomorrow being a bullpen game, I mean, just how much does that impact how the rest of the series goes? 
Well, well, we'll see tomorrow, but you know, I, I'd probably push wheels a little bit longer than I want to. This is at 60 pitches, 60 some pitches after two innings. That's that's heavy workload. Um, but because of the bullpen day, he said he was fine. He wanted to give us as much as he possibly could, and, and so you know, he did that, and that was that was big. Of Rob Thompson asked anything that really bugged you tonight by our man on the scene, Corey Seidman, and he said probably the pickoff at first by Drew Ellis got picked off yeah, there. Yeah, it was a dumb play. It, I mean, it, at certain times, you got to stay within your baseball elements and what you've learned growing up. And getting picked off first base by a catcher, that's a no-no anytime you look at it. But mm -hmm. I also did hear him bring up the routes of Marsh, the routes of Schwarber in the first inning, it, th that could have been a game changers on both plays. Yeah, it could have been game changers. Th then he says, "I thought Wheeler had good stuff." And, 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 no, he was sa he said Caleb told him that he had good stuff. Yeah, but he's the manager, and he can see for himself what yeah, kind of stuff uh, that, that that Zach was, Wheeler had. And Zach not, Wheeler went two, three and two thirds innings. That was not the same stuff that he had in Atlanta in his previous. Start. When he was lights that, I out. Mean, anybody watching the show, anybody watching the game tonight, would say the exact same thing.